Section 14.2, reaction rates. So the speed of a reaction is defined as the change that occurs per unit of time. And the change we're talking about is molarity. Molarity is the concentration. So you have here uh, an A where you have a concentration of A. It's going to break apart and turn into to B. So at the very beginning, we have no B at all. And so A is going to go away as B is being produced. So A is a, is a reactant. It's going to be used up, and so it's going to decrease. Your B is your product. It's going to be made, okay? So um, over here, you're going to have a reduction in A over time, okay? A is going to be used up, and at the same time, you're going to produce some B. B is going to be made at the same time that A is broken apart. So think of, of using bread and peanut butter to make peanut butter sandwiches, your individual pieces of bread go away as your sandwiches are being made. The more sandwiches you have, the less bread you're going to have, the less peanut butter you're going to have, but the more sandwiches you're going to have. Same thing here. Your sandwiches are being produced at the same rate that your peanut butter goes away. All right, it's the same thing. So you'll think of your peanut butter um, by itself as A and your peanut butter sandwiches as B. Uh, so it's going to be made at the same rate that that is going away. So the rate remembers your speed. That's what you're looking at in kinetics. So in this example, you've got at zero seconds, you've got all A, no B. At 20 seconds, it's about half-half. You've still got a little bit of A uh, and a little bit of B. And at 40 seconds, you've got less A and more B. So this is going down, down, down. This is going up, up, up at the same amount of time. So here would be, so at zero seconds, where you have like a zero amount, but and you're going to have a one, one mole of A, then A is going away. So this is A, this is B. At 20 seconds, it's about half, half. One is going higher, the other is going lower. And then at 40 seconds, B is getting higher. This is 0.7 and A is getting smaller at point three. So in order to find the rate, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the, the second concentration, whatever, whatever the second concentration, minus your initial concentration. So let's say here, your B was, what is this, 0.7? Okay, so you take 0.7 of B, so you're gonna take the top, so here's your rate, okay, your average rate, is going to be equal to 0.7 minus what you started with. What you started with was zero. So 0.7 divide, minus zero divided by how much time did it take? So 40 seconds minus zero seconds. Okay, so a lot of times it starts at zero. It doesn't have to start at zero. You just take the final seconds minus the initial seconds. So it's gonna be 40 seconds. And so you're going to end up with 0.7 divided by 40. And then whatever that is, is your rate. And that's the rate at that time. That's your average rate over the entire period of time. So I'd say this is um, average, your average rate. Now your instantaneous rate, um, you'd need either a little bit of calculus to do that if you want to do ugly math or a little bit of geometry. So let me draw this a little bit bigger. Okay, so let's say that I have, um, a, a line that's moving like this. So I'm starting at zero, starting at zero down here, and then going up to some degree. So whatever, whatever my tangent is, the, the steepness of that line is my rate at that moment. Okay, at a different moment, say this moment, so here's the one at this moment, wherever that is, and here's it at this moment. Do you see it's changing very fast at the beginning? It's changing slower here, and then in the case where it actually would taper off, this could be zero where it doesn't change at all. Okay, so you can change at different times. So an instantaneous rate is, is measuring the speed at that particular time. So in your text, they give you a specific example. They've give, given you some butyl chloride, which is just some stuff, and put it in some water, 
and it turned into an alcohol. Okay, so you're going to be making butyl alcohol. But in order to make the butyl alcohol, you're taking off chlorides and adding hydroxides. So the chlorides are coming off and the hydroxides are coming on and you're making something with it. You're making the butyl alcohol. Well, by, so by doing that, the, the butyl chloride, the stuff you start with, is going away. It's going to be eaten away and your alcohol is going to be produced. You're making the alcohol. So what they did is they, they took the concentration of the butyl chloride at the beginning, which was, you know, full whatever you had. So 0.1 molar is what you had of concentration. Remember, that's a molarity. Concentration is moles of solute divided by liters of solution. So how many moles of stuff is dissolved in the water? Okay. Then at 50 seconds, they took a reading. At 100 seconds, 150 seconds, all the way up to 10,000 seconds. So what you ended up with was you started up here at point 0.1 and ended up all the way here at zero. All right, so it's going away slowly, 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 slowly. At the same time, the butyl hydroxide is being made. Eventually, it is also at zero. So whenever it's a straight line, it's going to be zero. So this is moving really fast. This is moving a little slower. This is moving not at all. So it's being made. So what you do in order to find the speed is you have to take concentrations at various times and then you um, those concentrations help you to find what the rate is. And if you remember the rate of speed in your car, it's just how many miles did you travel in a certain amount of time. And that is your average speed over your whole trip. And then your instantaneous speed is your speedometer and the speedometer is measuring at any point in time, what you're doing. So it's the same idea. It's your rate, how much you're doing in a certain amount of time. So your average rate, remember, is the change in concentration, whatever the first concentration minus your initial concentration, divided by how much time it took to change. So if you are at 50 seconds, okay, going from 50 seconds back to zero seconds, that's 50 seconds change. So your delta T would be 50 seconds. Well, what's the concentration difference? Okay, so you take whatever you whatever your second one is, 0.09 in this case, divided by 1, 0.1. Well, that's going to give you a negative number. So that means that you're going to end up with a, a negative average rate. So you end up uh, putting that. Your average rate is usually expressed as positive. So if something's going away, these guys are going away. Okay, going away. These are being produced over here. So this number is going to go up. This number is going to go down. So if it's going from 0.1 to 0.09, simply take the 0.09, whatever your second one is, minus the first. You'll get a negative number. Then that negative takes care of that. That's the change in concentration divided by how much time elapsed. And then you get a rate. And then each time the rate is changing, you can see your your 1.9 times 10 to the 4 is big. 1.7 times 10 to the 4 is a little smaller. 1.6 times 10 to the 4 is smaller. 1.4 is smaller still. So imagine being um, all of the kids at the 7th grade sock hop are standing around the walls. Then suddenly, suddenly, miracle happens and somebody dances. Well, now you have less people along the walls. That means the chances of getting a dance partner are less and less and less because you have less people to choose from along the wall. So at the beginning, things are really fast. But then as it proceeds, because there's less and less to deal, less and less still that hasn't reacted, you're going to get a slower, slower, slower. So your rates are going to dec uh, decrease as you go. This is what I was trying to explain, that these average rates decrease as you go why? Because you have less and less material to bump into each other. Because some of that material is already bumped into each other, and now you have less that hasn't reacted. The longer you go, the less you have that hasn't reacted, and the less likely it is for those two to bump into each other with exactly the amount of energy and the right orientation to actually make a product. So this is the instantaneous rate. The instantaneous rate doing it uh, via geometry 
is just like you did in algebra, you're going to take a slope of a right triangle over a certain amount of time. Okay, so here's your time from this place to this place. That's how much time. So you're going to go for what what is your uh, what is your concentration to start with? What's your concentration to stop with? And then it's going to be rise. Okay, rise is your concentration over run. Rise over run is your slope. And the slope at that point is your instantaneous uh, rate. So it's the rate at that point. So when you have a curved line, you're going to have different, different rates at all points. The only time that you're going to have the same would be if you had a straight line. If you had a straight line, no matter what time that you look at, you're going to have the same rate of decrease or increase. But if you have a curved line, if there's any kind of an exponential curve to it, then you have a different rate at different times. So it, like this would be very steep. This would not be as steep. This would be getting rid of, of a reactants very fast. This is getting rid of reactants rather slowly. So since all reactions eventually slow down over time, the, if you're actually finding about how fast something reacts, really you're interested in at the very beginning. As it's where you've got everything is there, all the concentrations there, all of the seventh graders are along the wall. How fast are they starting to dance? That's, that's really what you mean by rate. How fast is a reaction of this stuff with this stuff? You're really interested in right at the beginning because eventually it tuckers out and it's not so much. So you want to know what's the instantaneous rate very, very close to the beginning of the reaction. Now something that um, maybe doesn't occur to you right away is that this stuff is my reactants and it's going to be dropping. And there's a certain speed that it drops. Okay, it's being used up. The chlorine is being pulled off of the butyl, uh, the, the carbon base, and then the hydroxide group is going to be coming on, and then you're making some alcohol. Well, the production of alcohol is exactly the same rate that the that the uh, butyl chloride is going away. So the speed of this going away is the same speed as this is going being productive, produced. So it's the idea of you are making sandwiches at the same rate that you're using up two pieces of bread each. Now, here is not two pieces of bread per sandwich. This is one to one. So I've got one butyl chloride using up in order to make one butyl alcohol. So it's a one to one. So that means the rate is going to be the same. The one being used up is going to be negative. The one being produced is going to be positive. And it's a one to one relationship. If you ever have something like two pieces of bread for every sandwich, where you have one sandwich, but two pieces of bread at the beginning, suddenly now you've got a two to one relationship. Now that has to be figured in in the rate, and we can look at that in a second. So here's our peanut butter sandwich again. So here's bread. In this case, it's hydrogen, hydroiodide, or hydroiodic acid, hydroiodide. So if I have two of these molecules, to make one mole um, of, say, hydrogen gas or one mole of iodine, then it's a two to one. It's two pieces of bread to one sandwich. For that reason, I, it can't be one to one. It's one over two to one. So you're going to take whatever your coefficient is of the stuff going away, and it's going to come on the bottom of a fraction at the beginning, and then the other one is just going to be equal to a one because that one over one is just one. So if you if it's going if you have a two to one relationship in the balanced equation, then your rate is going to be going away at negative, then one over the coefficient equals uh, in this case, since there's no coefficient, it would be one change of iodine over time. So hopefully this is what you're going to use. Now it looks awful, I'm sorry about the math, but really what you have is you have a coefficient and then you have a concentration, okay? You have a coefficient and then you have a certain amount of stuff. So you have coefficient of some stuff, you have a different coefficient of some stuff, you have a different coefficient of whatever this is ma being made, and this is being made here. Well, this is going away, this is going away, this is being made, this is being made. So your rates are going to be equal to each other. So let's look at the rate of going away of this first thing. Well, the coefficient is A, so it's going to be negative since it's going away. 
and it's going to be 1 over that coefficient of a times the change in concentration over time. Okay. Same thing with B. B is going away since it's one of the reactants. B is the coefficient, little b is the coefficient. So I'm going to, have, it's a negative because it's going away. It's going to be 1 over that coefficient of B times whatever the change of concentration of that stuff as it's going away over time. Now this stuff on the right is, isn't being produced, so it's not negative, it's a positive. So there's no negative here. But if I have a coefficient here of C, it's 1 over C times the change in concentration. And that uh, those brackets mean molarity. Molarity, remember, is a concentration, moles over liters, uh, divided by time. And same thing here. If I have D as a coefficient, it's 1 over D times the concentration change of D over time. Okay, so the more you use this, when you use this, it's going to start making sense. Uh, before you use it, it just looks terrifying, but I think you can get it.